Uh, our first speaker today is uh, another woman I really admire, Secretary Treasurer of the AFL-CIO, Liz Schuler. Liz holds the, high, the second highest position at the AFL-CIO and is the first woman and the youngest person to hold that position. One of Liz's biggest roles at the AFL is to engage young people and communities and help break down the myths about unions. We are incredibly honored that she could take the time to be with us today to share her thoughts on the role unions can play in helping build a better food system. Our moderator for this panel is Diane Brady, a senior editor at Bloomberg Business Week. Diane is an award-winning journalist and has interviewed newsmakers worldwide. And again, I'm so honored that these two really cool women could be here today. And I want to invite them and all of our panelists to the stage. Good morning. Wow, I was listening to Saru. Yes, please. Um, I caught a little bit of Saru's presentation and I hope she got you fired up this morning. It's an early time slot. Uh, I want to thank Danielle, uh, if she's still around, uh, for inviting me here today because as I look out on the crowd, this isn't a normal kind of union crowd for me. <laughs> um, how many people, just out of curiosity, have any relationship to a union? Can you raise your hand? Okay, there are a few out there. Maybe family members or maybe yourselves. Um, and I thought, when I got this invitation, I thought, what a perfect opportunity to really bring together kind of the workers' movement and the food movement. Um, and as we've, you've probably heard over the last day or so, it's not something that is obvious to a lot of people. So that's why I'm so excited to be here. And by the way, I'm from Portland, Oregon, originally. I don't know if there's any Oregonians out there. A few little hand claps. Um, and I don't know if any of you watch Portlandia. All right, all right. So we're often asked, you know, if you're from Portland, if, you know, you know where your chicken came from or what the hometown is, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it is an exaggeration, I will say, uh, but it's somewhat true. <laughs> uh, we are very proud of our connection to uh, the progressive movement, the food movement, um, but we care very much about what we eat. Uh, so I'm proud of having grown up in a very um, forward-looking, forward-thinking state that are most people in that state, I would say, are very aware of the issues you're talking about today. So our goal is to make that a, na a nationwide consciousness, right? And I love also being in spaces that are new because we get to um, exchange ideas and hopefully you're hearing some thoughts and you will from the panel um, that you haven't heard before. Um, and I'm not taking anything for granted because there are a lot of folks who don't have interactions with unions. So um, the bottom line here that I hope you'll walk away with is that our movements should be more closely aligned, that we should be working more closely together because food quality and sustainability basically is what we stand for in the labor movement because we're worker activists that are making that happen, right? Um, so we're really in this struggle to improve the food system together, and it is one struggle, but there are many different ways that we're attacking it. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the AFL-CIO represents uh, 12 and a half million working men and women throughout the country, many who work throughout the food system. Um, and you'll be hearing from them this morning, some of them directly. So farm workers, meat cutters, poultry workers, restaurant workers, grocery workers, uh, workers who transport food, um, food safety inspectors, and many more. There's uh, so many that I'm not mentioning, but that gives you a flavor of the workers who are on the front lines, making sure that our food is safe and of the highest quality. But I will say, how often do you think about those workers? They're often invisible. And thinking back in history, and probably it's been uh, noted before, more than 100 years ago, Upton Sinclair, name ring a bell? He worked undercover in sh uh, Chicago meatpacking plants, and he revealed the abuse and the exploitation of immigrant workers in the industry including the unforgettable story of a worker who fell into a rendering tank. 
and was processed into lard. Now, obviously, the public reaction to that was fierce, right? The jungle forced federal measures to make food safer, but not workers, working conditions. And we, I will say, as a result, we still struggle today, right, with enforcement of the safety regulations we do have. But the bottom line is we should not have any separation between good food and good jobs. No separation. Because working conditions in the food system are everyone else's eating conditions. And what our members win at the bargaining table has a direct effect on what everyone puts on the dinner table. And I only have a short time this morning, and I'm very conscious of my clock, um, but I wanted to give you a quick snapshot of what work looks like in the food industry. And most of you know many jobs in the food industry pay low wages, and you heard from Saru. It's at or below minimum wage in some cases with you, if you talk about the tipped minimum wage of 2.13 an hour. 2.13 an hour for tipped workers. Many people don't even know that exists. 80% of low-wage workers don't have a single day of paid sick leave. 80% of low-wage workers. So that forces, in some cases, the people who handle our food to go to work sick. And you've heard it before, right? When they're working sick, it's not hard to imagine what that does to the food we're eating. Um, farm work today still bears the legacy of agricultural slavery and sharecropping, and many food industry jobs are among the most dangerous in the nation, with threats ranging from pesticide exposure, uh, with backbreaking labor in food processing plants, sexual assault uh, of farm workers and restaurant servers, undocumented immigrants who work in fields and kitchens are especially vulnerable to workers' rights violations. Wage theft, right? Inadequate safety and health protections. Unscrupulous employers, they have a pretty easy way to handle things if someone complains, right? If you're undocumented, you uh, go to your employer to complain about conditions, what happens? It's pretty easy for them to just call immigration officials, right? So who's going to complain in those conditions? International trade deals. We're talking trade these days, right? Um, they th uh, these trade deals threaten workers' rights as well in, the, in terms of the right to safe and locally produced food. Who cares about locally produced food? Anyone? OK, it's a trick question. Everyone's hand should go up. Uh, so trade issues have a huge impact. And in the midst of all of this, we're in a political environment that makes winning or even maintaining the regulations we have, including food safety, worker safety, workers' rights, makes all of that more difficult than ever. So we're up against a lot, and I didn't want to be the Debbie Downer this morning, so I want to end on a positive note and share a couple of creative examples of worker activism that's actually challenging the status quo. Anybody up for that? All right, so two very visible campaigns, the organization United for Respect at Walmart, called Our Walmart, um, and the fast food workers. Um, so the disturbing irony of low wages in the food system is that many industry workers themselves experience food insecurity. And at Walmart, the country's largest grocery chain, Mind you, a lot of people think of their retailers, but they're grocery chains as well. Workers actually have set up donation bins before Thanksgiving so that their colleagues could celebrate the holiday with decent meals. In addition to the Black Friday protests, I'm sure you've seen all across the country that call attention to the issues of fair pay and treatment of workers on the job, workers actually waged a Respect the Bump campaign that won some accommodations for pregnant workers on the job, not as many as we'd like to see, and we're still working on it, but I think that is a huge victory, right, for women, especially on the job. The fight for 15 fast food, food workers all across the country going on strike, 190 cities last year, and they're continuing into 2015. I will quote a worker um, that I came across during the campaign, Terrence Wise, a Burger King, Cashier, who was arrested at one of the Fight for 15 uh, strikes last year, he said he was demonstrating for the future of his three daughters. 
Um, Tomorrow, he said, I've got to move out of my house because I can't afford to pay rent. And he had worked at Burger King for 10 years at $9.50 an hour. And a lot of people think you can survive on $9.50 an hour. And as the president said, you try it, right? So let's think about how we can more closely align um, and support each other in these struggles. And I will say, um, Baldemar uh, Velasquez, who's on the panel, is going to be talking a lot about some of the campaigns that he's working on. Um, Mia from UFCW and others. Um, there's some ter- tremendous examples of, um, I know the uh, Mount Olive Pickle uh, strike, Baldemar, um, the effort that you had in the 90s on behalf of Cucumber Pick pickers, and um, so I'll let Baldemar talk about that. Um, But I guess I just want to leave you with, um, you know, these are just a few examples of workers standing up and making our voices heard. They're not going down quietly, uh, but I believe that there is so much more that we can do together. And I was in Detroit not long ago, and yeah, Detroit, all right, got to love that. Um, And I ran into a woman that had a mission to use local food production to fuel the city's economy, looking at creative ways to really boost Detroit, right? The labor movement was nowhere to be found in that conversation. But we have so much that we can bring to the table. Uh, We have a network of state AFL-CIOs and local labor movements that can really uh, bring a lot of people power to these efforts, um, activist power. And it just made me think, how could that network of activists improve even just one idea, food deserts? Right? How could we work together on that? How can we help low-wage workers whose paychecks and where they live limit their diets to fast food? How can we work together on that? So while we work to raise the wages of, of workers and you're, raise, you're working to raise the quality of food, let's bring them together and make this something that we can fight for every family in the country. So we're all about strength in numbers in the union movement. Um, we're stronger together, that's our motto. And I think that implies to really improving the food system um, as well as union organizing and collective bargaining. So it's an impressive group. We're looking forward to working with you and I think together we can do great things. Thank you. <laughs>